Oh, the 1983-84 team historically is with, is one of the best we've had. It was a great year, obviously. And that was a really, really fun team to, to watch. We all knew that we were trying to achieve a common goal, which was to be the best team we could be. Our basketball team is the 116th version of DePaul men's basketball. So we kind of count them down um, because I, I want our guys to understand a little bit about the tradition. And uh, this team that's being honored today uh, is one of the is one of the best teams in the history of those 116, uh, those 116 teams. If you look at the success of that team, it really started with the end of the 82-83 season. They were uh, seven and seven, but they finished with 11 straight wins and just missed getting into the tournament. And that seemed to be the momentum coming into the next season. We had lost four starters from the year before. They were all really good players. Um, in particular, Ted Rutan, who was inducted into the Hall of Fame last year. Coach Steele was, was a terrific coach. I really felt privileged and honored to, to be a part of the team with him as a coach. Coach Steele had been putting together a winning program. He was in his third season, 30 years old, energetic. Mike was able to motivate his players. He sat Steve and Juan and I down at the beginning of the season and kind of explained, you know, here's what I expect out of you three as senior leaders on the team. This is a team that had a lot of leaders. Obviously, we had the seniors, uh, David Hathaway, Juan Aponte, Steve Stroop. Juan Aponte, um, he was a really key player for us. Let our team rebound, as a matter of fact. Uh, he did a great job stepping in. Um, Steve Stroop, I can't say enough about Steve. He loved the team and the game. Uh, the junior class. Brent Ehrman, Craig McAtee, you know, the sophomores that year, Phil Wendell, Neil Ogle, Tim Veek, were all leaders. And even uh, part of our freshman class with David Gall and, and Scotty Lewis, uh, they played important roles on the team. Our practices were brutal. Holy cow, when are we gonna stop and take a break and get some water? That was just the, the first thing I recall is there were no breaks. We went from one drill to the another, another and it was uh, very different than what high school was. We just beat the crap out of everybody. Um, as a result of that, there was competition for every playing spot, even as a senior who had played a lot. I had to bring it every day to practice if I wanted to stay on the court. That was one of the things that made, uh, made this team special. You know, I don't think at the beginning of the season we ever envisioned ourselves necessarily winning a national championship. You know, I just think as the season went on, we, we realized we were, we were better and better. I don't think I have seen the bleachers as full as they were when I was a student here in 83. And I remember about midway through the season feeling there's nobody that can beat us. And it was a pretty cool feeling to walk into the building and think, all right, who's it gonna be today? The more we kept winning, the more people kept saying, wow, this is a pretty good team. And we just kept winning and keep getting more and more accolades and attention as the year wore on and got into the rankings and kept moving up the rankings. And by the end of the season, we were ranked third going into the tournament, and especially knowing that we were playing at home, gave us some confidence. And we played some good teams in the tournament. Uh, Capital was really good, and so was Heidelberg. Um, we had a game against LeMoyne-Owen. I, I think that LeMoyne-Owen game to go to the Final Four is what, what I remember the most about that season. They were far more talented, bigger and stronger than us at every position. We just systematically took them apart. 98-49. It was a home game, and we all got to play. Pretty impressive win. That really showed our depth. That was uh, that was pretty exciting. I went back to my fraternity, and my fraternity brothers said, "Oh, Hathaway, we thought you guys were going to get killed." You know, they watched the warm-ups, and um, obviously that didn't happen. And finally, in sports, the DePaul Tigers have advanced to the NCAA Division III basketball tournament finals this weekend in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The Tigers 24-4 won their 23rd straight home game Saturday night in defeating LeMoyne Owen 98-49. Now, the Tigers will seek to become the second Indiana team in three years to win that championship. Hope was ranked number one in Division III, and they were undefeated. In the first game, Hope got upset in overtime, and then we played Capital very close two or three point game, I think, and won. And the next day there was a consolation game between Capital and Hope, and Capital beat Hope again in overtime. And then we played Heidelberg for the championship and beat them in overtime. So three of the four games were overtime games. It was an amazing weekend of basketball. I think about the final four, and we lost a very good Wisconsin Whitewater team in the semis. They were 
they were just better than we were. You know, we, we thought we could beat them. Uh, we played well. Um, they, they were just better that night. They were big, they were talented, they shot lights out. I think they shot 67% or something stupid like that from the floor to beat us. And, you know, they deserved to win. I don't think the team felt like we played poorly and lost. We felt like we played our best and just got beat. But when we got to the locker room after the game, we had a consolation game the next night against a very good team from New York called, or New Jersey, I think, called Uppsala. And we all gathered around very quickly and put the loss behind us and decided we wanted to win that last game against Uppsala. And so it really struck me as, um, said a lot about the character of our team that we quickly regrouped and everybody on the team decided we're going to win this last game. Even if it's not for the championship, it's for third place, we want to make sure we win the last game. I think that says a lot about the team and the coaches that we were in there fighting until the very end. But yeah, taking off that uniform the last, after the last game was, was tough. We just played for the love of the game. That 18 wins that they had that year was a record. I just, uh, I, I look back with great fondness on my, my time as a, as a DePaul basketball player, and that certainly started in, in the 1983-1984 year. I'm just glad we did as well as we did, and we could have so many fond memories. It's no surprise to me that he was able to achieve what he did with that team. And that's one of the greatest teams of all time, and they're one of the things we're trying to live up to every day. I just want to say I'm, I'm grateful I had the opportunity to play for DePaul. So it was such a great group of guys and for excellent coaches and it was a very positive experience and I'm really grateful for it.